This is the place where worlds collide, river meets ocean, anglers on piers vengefully cast into anglers on boats. Schools of redfish and snook battle for bait. Glinting gangs pushed and pulled by the tide's ebb and flow. It's a scene, all right. Crowded above and below the surface. A saltwater Times Square, a moving and grooving spot for watermen of all skill levels. It went up against pirates and pioneers, the environment and engineers. Now we are taking it on. Competition and contrast run the river. It's a gateway to the Atlantic, which is as wide and deep as the channel is skinny and shallow. Sebastian Inlet is like a moat in front of an enemy's castle. But we got a horse. We're armed. Let's knock down the wall and see what's inside. Despite its remote location and the one north-south road in and out, Sebastian Inland is an infamous fishing destination that packs as much diversity and drama per square inch as any in the world. Sebastian belongs to Florida's Treasure Coast, an intersection of Indian River, St. Lucie, and Martin Counties. It lies within Indian River County, midway through the east coast of the Florida Peninsula between Melbourne and Vera Beach. It's called the Treasure Coast for a reason. An estimated $500 million in gold was lost when the Spanish fleet of 1715 encountered a hurricane. It's still down there, somewhere, hidden in the sand, silt, and seagrass. But those Spanish doubloons aren't the only treasure in these waters. The fish and surrounding wildlife are alive and well thanks to protection from the U.S. government and the state of Florida. Sebastian is home to the country's first national wildlife refuge, as well as a Florida state park. Binoculars spy migratory birds along the park's stretch of the Great Florida Birding and Wildlife Trail. Endangered species like manatees breach the waters near shore. This kind of land is typically peppered with high-rise condos and beach cabanas. Nope, not here. It still retains that old Florida feel. But don't come expecting a few squawking egrets and loafing sea cows. Sebastian runs on tension and energy. The thin, shallow inlet connects the Indian River and the Atlantic, funneling the fishing action into a small window. The result? Nearly every nearshore species finds its way into the mix. Snook, redfish, jack creval, tarpon, and the people come too, in droves by boat, kayak, canoe, and pickup truck, on jetties, bridges, transoms, and bows. Weather and rough conditions require that our original trip be changed, then rearranged, then changed again. Fall in Florida is littered with hurricanes skating the Gulf Stream and the first cold fronts of the year. It's a dicey time to plan bluebird fishing days in the Sunshine State. That leaves us 24 hours to make it work. Today is the starting line. Tomorrow is the deadline. These are the fishing grounds that I grew up on, these jetties and piers. But in tight fishing grounds like the inlet, you need an expert to find the spots within the spots. A guide for avid charters, Robert Roman calls Sebastian home. A second generation guide, Robert knows the ins and outs, the tides, the migrations. October is mostly the redfish spawn. Redfish move in, they come in the inlet air, stage up real good before the spawn and feed real hard. And you got the nighttime snook fishing that gets really good. A little bit of sporty weather to play with, keep it interesting. 
His previous experience as a pro surfer provides him with a keen understanding of the water, its unknown whims, and forceful wishes. But don't let the easy smile fool you. Robert lives for the bite, for the adrenaline, and the chance to land just one more big fish. Captain Hiram's, a hotel and marina, is a short walk from US-1 and across the river from the inlet, our launch point. As the sun breaks like an egg yolk on the horizon, we make our first run across the grass flats and head into the pass. Get ready and be steady because it gets rough. Watch for the rip where the river meets the sea and the dramatic inward and outward tides that turn the once clear water into liquid fog. A storm brewing offshore can accelerate a light breeze into a 25 knot wind. Add in the chop from the parade of boats running past at top speed, and it creates a clutter of chaos unlike anywhere else. Sport Fishing Television is brought to you by Ram Trucks. Powered by Ram Trucks. Guts, glory, Ram. Buy Yellowfin, your legacy. Buy Simrad, go with confidence. And buy Mercury Marine, number one on the water. Facing three foot rollers and a current racing at seven knots, we're in a washing machine and it's not set to delicates. First up, Snook, bass on steroids. They are ready to pounce, but Snook are smart. They are known to ignore bait, especially when it's attached to an angler. The temperamental suckers will even scoff at how a bait is presented. Snook want everything just right. Well, they get what they want, the top secret magic bait. There we go. Big fish. Yeah. Taking on a snook is like impressing a new girl at a bar. We pull out all the stops. Flowers, good conversation, and it works. <laughs> oh, nice fish, dude. Awesome. Love it. Love it. Love it. It's a fatty, a 43-incher, and stacked. We start off the first drift. It's too big to keep. Anything over 33 inches is released to spawn and grow. Where there are snook, there are usually redfish. Heads like football helmets with hunter instincts. And when spawning, they travel in pods for a chance at multiple hookups. Nice, fish on. <laughs> Love that sound. The bulls put up a fight, and not just for eight seconds. Similar to playing tug of war with a Rottweiler, it's a battle worth calling home about. Fish on. Ah, he's coming back now. These copper armored reds are in spawn mode and glow with energy, producing powerful runs and popping colors only present this time of year. That's about the coolest colored redfish I've caught in a long time. Look like neon orange. It's like bright, bright copper. It's a pretty fish, super cool color. As the sun starts to disappear, there's a feeling that our second chances are approaching. These reds don't just waddle towards bait. They have force behind them. Yeah, there we go. Fish on. During magic hour, the mix of mightiness from the fish and motion from the crashing water creates an angler's dance. These are the kind of moments that always seem too short. That there's a beautiful Sebastian in that redfish. Yeah. Caught on the magic bait. Magic bait. The adrenaline washes away once daylight takes refuge below the vanishing point. When the fishing slows down, there are two options. Wear yourself out or wait for the tide to switch. The latter sounds like the better idea. Sanctuary comes in the form of a nearby island.
How long till the tide turns? Uh, about 45 minutes to an hour. It's about two hours? About that. You just wanna hang out here for two hours? Light a fire? A quick fireside R&R &R on an intercoastal island is just another thing that makes Sebastian special. It's a pretty unique place. It's special to me, mainly just from growing up in the area and fishing it from when I was really little with my dad. A lot of cool memories. Yeah. But uh, as far as the fishery goes, it has a, a pretty diverse fishery. You primary target big fish though, right? Yeah, I tend to try and stay on the big fish when they're around. And I mean, all we've caught is big fish. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was the goal. Yeah. Yeah. Robert has made a life out of fishing, a passion that shines through every hour of his day. I really can't see myself doing anything else. I never have a morning where I wake up and I'm like, oh man, I gotta go to work today. Can't beat being on the water fishing, paid in lifestyle for sure. Night settles in. Time for a second wind. The stars and darkness weed out the daytime crowds. But we are still here. Our time is now. Sport Fishing Television, powered by Ram Trucks, is being brought to you by Yeti Coolers, built for the wild. By Penn, let the battle begin and by Costa Sunglasses. See what's out there. Driven to Fish, powered by Ram Trucks. The route is planned. Baits are dropped on the east side of the bridge, all while trying to ride the drift and avoid a collision with a pilot or fender. Fishing at night is a completely different sport. Eyes adjust, senses grow. Civilization is a string of yellow lights in the distance. Wind is constantly at your back. The only sounds are the engines, rumbling waves, and screams of the wind. There you go. Jack Creval, a powerful and fun game fish. Hard bodied and aggressive, they put up a good fight. When taken out of the water, they talk back to you with their infamous grunt that sounds like a pig snort. We trade out species, release a jack, and catch a red. Reels are singing. A snook will do some fast, long runs. Redfish will do more steady pulling, running and running and running and head down. I say this is a redfish. This one is a fat boy, and we didn't have time to wake him up from a slumber. He's up for a late night. Nice fish. After dark, all the usual suspects that populate the inlet during the day are still around, and they haven't worn out their welcome. A couple hours of sleep is all we can afford. Just enough to recharge the battery. More out of a necessity than anything else. We head back out early through the pass to the Atlantic before the onshore Gulf Stream winds pick up. The run for bait is less than a mile. Grabbing your own is a welcome bonus. Free ammo for the range. A good cast net chuck is like throwing out a runner at home base, an alley-oop.
The beach is filled with familiar faces. Jackson Snook. Snook run thick along the beach and provide a pop of subsurface flash that make them an easy target for sight fishing. Right there, see him? Just running the outside edge. Big line siders can be found a few feet from the shore break. You could be going on a beach stroll with a snook and never know it. The state of Florida has managed snook conservatively since their population was hit hard by cold weather in 2010. Some estimates report that over 50% of adult snook were killed that year. These new actions from the state are paying off. We're seeing it firsthand. This year, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission is hosting a snook symposium to discuss the stock assessment and population recovery from the 2010 cold kill. Snook come close to these areas, not only to spawn, but to stock up for wintertime. They position themselves on drop-off edges, waiting for their next meal. Today, free lunch is served. Nice. Sight nice. fishing is a birthday gift hidden in the closet. It's all about waiting for the right moment so your eagerness doesn't backfire. It's a pretty one, that's for sure. <laughs> Good job, Ow! <laughs> Get another one. Do it again. There we go. Nice. Nice. That's a good one, that's too. That's a big one, too. Sight fish right off the top. Can't beat it. One after another, one after another. <laughs> From the beach, sight fishing for snook can be a rare instance. It's front and center here because mullet are running. There are no turning leaves in the land of coconut palms. For the Florida fishermen, this is what fall looks like. Sport Fishing Television is being brought to you by Ram Trucks, powered by Ram Trucks. Guts, glory, Ram. By King Sailfish Mounts, for that once in a lifetime catch. By the Florida Keys and Key West, come as you are. And by Penn, let the battle begin. This is why we rolled the dice with the weather. The mullet run. It's no coincidence that the piers and jetties are packed. Why is it that the mullet run is important? It rings the dinner bell for nearshore species. During the fall run, schools of mullet migrate along the Florida coast, attracting every game fish along the way. It creates a relentless feeding frenzy, which in turn creates a frenzy for the anglers above. Everything is eating everything, the food chain in its purest form. You gotta love Robert. He doesn't miss a chance for that one last catch. Up against the clock, we're chasing reds, chasing mullets. Fishing directly under the boat. If yeah. you're not nervous, pick there, up. He is now. Yep. There he is. Another red, another red. Oh, another red. Two for, two for. That was awesome, that was dude. Sick. <laughs> dude. That's a big red, too. He wants to dig under the boat every time. They all do. Are you serious right now? <laughs> Not bigger. No, about identical. Here you go. Pretty sweet double. Good job, Bubba. Using light tackle, Snook go after our bait. Wait till you see this thing, buddy. What's that? It's gonna wake you up. Oh boy. Oh it's a boy. Snook. Oh my gosh. Even after a decade of guiding, Robert is bouncing off the boat at the size of this fish. He's thinking state record. Pound for pound, Snook have one of the strongest pulls in the water. My grandfather used to say a five pound Snook can pull a 10 pound largemouth bass backwards. This fighter gives me a run for my money, making multiple long runs. That's a big fish and a lot of current. He's got the line freight already. Yeah. Right. So we're just going to have to ease him up. And as soon as he gets somewhere that my hands can touch him, I'm going to block onto that thing like no one's business and not let go. <laughs> wow, dude. <laughs> Kidding me? 
Filling up the gas tank, loading the coolers, pulling long hours, it's funny how one fish makes it all worthwhile. That was fun. <laughs> Yelled at, cast into, lines broken oh. off, swells that challenge equilibrium, currents that would qualify for the Daytona 500, two hours of sleep. Fishing through the night leaves us exhausted, hands scorched, shoulders on fire. But the deadline is met thanks to Robert, the Zen master guide who takes it all in stride. Buddha on a boat. From here, Robert is heading home to see his family. He'll read his two children bedtime stories, then head back into the inlet tonight. There's always one more fish. Sebastian is a place of yin and yang. Backwater versus ocean. Jetty jockeys versus boaters. Preservation versus development. Secluded hideaway versus world famous reputation. It is the crossroads of contrast. But without contrast, Sebastian takes on a completely different identity. The competing forces are necessary ingredients in what makes my home fishing grounds unique. That hectic, kinetic intersection is exactly where Sebastian fulfills its potential. Thankfully, it is a safe house for fishermen, boaters, birders, surfers. In this protected paradise, an incredible, impossible history continues to be written. Our story ends here but only for the moment. <laughs>